Hey friends, this is Pastor Febercorn with you. It's Tuesday, June the 4th. It's time to uh, begin our week. Well, Monday begins our week, but our devotional, daily devotion week begins on Tuesday with Tuesdays with Marty. And uh, boy, these are all good. I hope they don't start to sound the same to you because I see uh, wisdom in, in every time we gather on Tuesday. Uh, Luther once said, God creates faith in the human heart the same way he created the world. He found nothing and created something. You remember this past Sunday, we talked a little bit about the Sabbath and uh, I guess the original or uh, fundamental meaning of the Sabbath was always to reflect on the pattern that God set up when he created the heavens and the earth. Um, he starts on nothing. There's only God in the beginning was God and nothing else existed. And he spoke things into existence over the course of six days, but on a seventh day, he rests. I suppose he could have just made a six day week. And went right into the next week, but uh, he set up a pattern. Six days you shall work, and on the seventh day shall rest. And one of the reasons for that was to reflect on the fact that he created the entire world, that we are his creatures. Well, if God is a God who takes nothing and makes something, which is kind of an oxymoron, because how do you take nothing? A God who creates... A, the, by the way, the, the cool theological term for this, many of you might know this or have heard it before, is ex nihilo. Out of nothing, uh, God creates. Um, there's a funny joke. Uh, some scientists are standing around talking with God, and they say, God, we don't need you anymore. We can create man. And God says, oh, yeah, show me. And they go over and get a pile of dirt, and they begin to do their experiment where they're going to raise up man from this dirt. And God says, no, no, no. You go get your own dirt. You get it? Right? There was nothing for God to make something from. He just spoke it all into existence. Uh, an evolutionary account would say that existing matter gives rise to what we have today, but that's not consistent with the creation account in the Bible, where uh, in the beginning was God and only God, and then by his good grace, he created something. He blessed us with a creation to live in. Now, that creation now is fallen, and it's broken, and it can be difficult to live in this creation, and that's why we look forward to a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Blessed are the meek, Jesus says, because they'll inherit the earth. Uh, that's what we're looking forward to is uh, Eden replanted, so to speak, uh, and God's going to have to do that uh, as well. And how do we get there? Through faith. And here's the point. God didn't take the little bit of good in us, the scintilla of good, and then, you know, make us better and fit for God's kingdom. No, he found nothing but a rotting, stinking uh, old Adam, uh, original sin, uh, a soul and body bound for death and hell and eternal destruction. And he said, I'm going to make a new creature. So there's a Bible verse where Paul talks about that. If anyone is in Christ, he is a, see, a new creation. You know, not just a spiffed up version of the old, but a brand new creation, just like there was a once a brand new created world and then it's fallen. So now we're fallen, but God's going to restore both creation and us from nothing other than his good and creative word. And that's something to hold on to uh, and look forward to each and every day of our lives. All right. You have a great rest of your week. I'll see you later.